Hey everyone, Bethany here from RBR Rough Beginnings Rehab, and this is a video that I put together for a Noodles family. It has clips on, in general, just how to control, um, impulse control, bratty, pushy, uh, adolescent dog behavior, but Noodle also has a severe issue with men, especially just a general nervousness with people and then he's had a lot of pressure put on him in the past which has made him lash out so for him that's an option so um, he's not a dog that will just maul somebody which is why uh, it's really important for me to note that the precautions that I go over in this video are not for dogs that are just really really driven to be aggressive dogs it's the kind of dogs that are more middle of the road that are really nervous and they will bite you know if they feel like they're pushed or uncomfortable or, or want to challenge challenge somebody, but not something that's part of an everyday behavior. Um, he also gets really pushy and will jump at joggers and mailmen and things like that, and he'll, he won't hesitate to go after those things as well. So you're, all the things that you see, even though it's interior work, it helps with those issues outside. So anyway, like I said, you know, this is geared towards the owners, but I figured that other people would get some, some goodness out of this too. So, um, enjoy. So with a very driven dog, he can get overexcited with food. So we're feeding in a way that teaches impulse control. All right, so you take the food out, <laughs> have the dog sit, grab the leash if you need to. And the idea is just to settle the dog down. Noodle already has a lot of drive. Um, so I don't need to increase drive with him. In fact, I need to decrease it. So I wait for, I, I put the bowl down. If he gets up, I just lift it back up, reset him in a sit, wait for eye contact, and then I actually give it to him. That way he doesn't get released and rush to the food because that is something we would do to create drive. And he does not need that. He needs to uh, take a chill pill, so. Break. Patterning crate if he's getting stubborn, resistant, or whiny with crate. Crate is one of the toughest things for this dog. So slowing down, taking your time, and breaking down each step, and getting him to listen to you and do it over and over will build trust and also give you leverage for any bad behavior in situations other than the crate. to stay in his crate and be leashed up in his crate. And he, he always has a blanket covering the front of his crate. So you always just want to open it a couple of inches, make sure he's not going to get up and bolt. She's not, but with a new person, he might try. When he's excited in the mornings, he is standing up, but not, not going to bolt out. And then he's just leashed up, brought out right away, have him sit. And if you want, that this is when you can put his muzzle on right away. 
safely getting him in and out without putting too much pressure on him and how to incorporate the muzzle. You can also use a bowl of food, but only if he's muzzled and you use a flat palm for him to lick up the kibble or treat if you feed it individually. All right, so how we would do it when um, Chris first started handling him is Chris would bring him up to the crate, put the drag leash on him, okay? This is super important. So what makes him nervous is just reaching around him because he's not sure what you're gonna do, what your intent is. Um, so what we do is we go ahead and crate, come on, crate. Put, them, put him in crate grab the drag line that way if he gets uncomfortable and starts doing like the weird eye you know you've always got you know control over him you can bring him out you know get him relaxed and have him go back in if you need to before you get the muzzle off but the tough thing for him is just touching him around here when he's not sure what you're gonna do so we put the drag line on him so you can grab that unhook his main leash, right? And then take the muzzle off of him. And I'm still holding on to this. And I keep it loose, I don't keep it tight. It's just in case. So I've taken the muzzle off, I don't touch him. I just drop the, drop the drag leash and shut the door. And he can wear that in there. So when you, when you come in to take him out of the crate, what we had to do in the beginning is he's more comfortable with women, so I would bring him out, muzzle him up, and then Chris would take him out until Chris could put the muzzle on him comfortably, which took about a week of working with him. So you've, instead of having to touch or grab or, or reach and maybe he wiggle out and jump out, you've got the drag leash right away. Let's go. You can have him come out, leash him up, sit, good boy, and put this on him right away, over his ear. And he's much calmer with the muzzle on. Because he knows, you know, he knows he can't do anything. And it's got, it's got, um, it's a Baskerville muzzle. So it's more open. So he can, come here, come here. So he can take food out of it. And he can drink out of it. So. And so you would just take the drag leash off. Remember to put it right on top of the crate, take him for a walk, and then come back, put it back on him, and do that whole process again. Besides the heel, place and place patterning is the most important thing when teaching a dog impulse control and build a permission-based relationship with the dog where he can listen and learn to exist rather than always be underfoot. This is super important with dogs with behavioral issues. Other dogs, they can just learn a strong stay, but going to your bed place command uh, can really move, uh, move that process along a lot faster, which is crucial for dogs with any behavioral issues. So it's important for him to get in the habit of listening to you guys. Even if you do have more of like a free roaming environment in the beginning, that's not gonna be what's best for him. He needs to just have a lot of structure and get used to listening to you guys. Um, so one of the ways that we do that, this is just one of the exercises. Noodle, place. So place is an implied down stay. So he should down automatically, but in the beginning with you guys, you might have to actually tell him to lay down. Um, but it's an implied down stay. So he's not allowed to get up until he's released or called off. Now he definitely has puppy brain where like if you're fixing dinner or 
something like that, or uh, or he just is in the mood to be ornery, he'll get up, but you always have to reset him. Break, that's his release word, or you can call him to you. Place, down, good boy. Break, let's go outside. Place, down, good boy. Break, place, no, place going for the water bowl. He guzzles water. Just <laughs> FYI, he is a water guzzler. Break. Place, which is another reason this kind of stuff is so important. No, down. Because he'll, uh, he's, he's had one accident and it was because he had guzzled a ton of water and I had let him loose. And he kind of bounced around dusty and I was just getting ready to take him out. I was grabbing the leash and he had an accident. It was you could tell he didn't want to do it. It was purely he couldn't help it. So keep that in mind, guys. That's why we don't do a lot of the free roaming, especially in the beginning. Break. So this is what gets him place used to listening to you, following your guidance, builds that type of permission-based relationship where he is less likely to act like a jerk because <laughs> he is a very driven working dog. Break. Place. Good boy. See, look, it's him being ornery. He knows what I want. There we go. Good boy. Noodle, come. Place. Down. Good job, buddy. All right, I'm going to stop there. What a good boy. This is about place duration and how and why we tether the dogs the first couple of days and weeks and about our important setup. Hurry up. Place. Down. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the concept of having a tether and how important it is for any dog going home, but especially for Noodle, um, especially if you're not going to leave him on muzzle all the time the first couple of weeks, which can be difficult because he'll just sit there and try to get it off some sometimes. Um, okay, so you put your dog in place, you do not want them free roaming all the time and feeling like they're gonna get there, that, that the house is now theirs, he will start to get anxiety, he will start to get territorial, he does much better with lots of structure, lots of rules, the first month or so, and then you can lighten up as he gets more comfortable and understands his place, because he's a very driven dog. Um, aren't you? Yes, he is, he says yes, and he is. Um, so, what, what I want you guys to do, and anyone out there watching this, I'm gonna put this on my Facebook, is when you're teaching place, and you wanna be able to do stuff in the house, you do not want your dog to be on top of you before you go no and reset them back in place. So you, you do a tether, right? So you take a normal leash, you wrap it around something, and you clip it to their collar or something, clip it to whatever they have on. It can be a prong if you're dealing, you know, if you're working on prong, anything like that. So that way, and the dog still has the regular leash on. The reason you've got the two leash system is because if, I'll show you, break. If he gets up and pulls, this leash, the tether, is tight. It could get twisted. And if you have a dog that's dealing with high excitement issues, aggressive issues or anything like that, touching them, having to untwist them and stuff is gonna get them more amped up. In Noodle's case, it's not, it's not safe until he, he gets comfortable with his new, his new handler. So you have this leash hanging here that's not tight that you can just pick up the end of it very, very non-intrusively, very cleanly very efficiently and just lead the dog back place down good so it's it's just a really it's a much cleaner way to communicate with your dog than dealing with the tether which is going to be tight and possibly twisted yes yes it is um now also no, that's enough <laughs> also in noodles case when chris was first he would do something um in the beginning like uh, run the uh, no, no, that's enough. See this? He likes to do this. No, 
when I squat down especially, he likes to be a mess. Um, when he would do the blender and stuff like that, he would get uncomfortable and kind of load. And then Chris would walk by and he'd kind of be like, oh, what am, you know, what am I going to, what am I going to do? But he would wait until Chris turned his back. He's a, he's a sneak, a sneaky guy. So that's why this tether is so important to prevent an outburst like that from happening. And honestly, we've had dogs move our couch before because this is actually not attached to the main frame. So we have a double tether that we were doing in the beginning, which this is, this is very strong and it was on a shorter leash. So if you're dealing with any aggressive issues at home, uh, maybe two dog, two fighting dogs, do not put it on something. No, no. Do not put it on something that is going to is going to move or give at all. We totally trust him now. We don't really have to worry about him anymore. Um, I mean, Chris can't like rush in and grab him or something, but but we don't have to worry about him anymore, so it's not a big deal. But in the beginning, we put up all of those um, precautions so we could set Noodle up for success, and that's so important: is to find little ways to set the dog up. For success so there isn't a bad moment in the beginning now as you start to challenge the dog that's a little bit different that's something we try to do specifically to set up um, uh, to just set up an inhibition or or something that we're, we're targeting specifically like dog aggression will set up a scenario you know for the dog to possibly react but that's very very different you know with a fearful dog you want to really set them up in as many ways as possible to succeed and this is one of the the probably besides the muzzle and the crate this is the best way to do that is by the place command and by the uh the tether isn't that right and if there's other dogs in the home and your dog is in place in the beginning your dog cannot go up and bother the dog in place because that's first of all it'll make the dog anxious about the spot It'll make the spot more negotiable because they'll get up and want to greet the other dog or possibly play for him. Um, and so you've got to advocate for your dog. Show your dog that you can control his environment by also not letting the other dogs just come up to him and get him excited while he's supposed to be, you know, chilling out in place command. So that's another aspect of this too. Isn't that right, Noodle? He says yes. This is just a clip of us working on the come command in different areas other than the park. Noodle, come. Yeah, come on, buddy. Come. Good boy. Sit. Good job. That was a good boy. Ooh, look at those eyes. Good boy. Break. Yeah, go get something. Go get into something. Break. So we do recalls off of downs days, but then break, but we also do recalls off of just sniffing or a squirrel or something like that that makes him more reliable um, down the road to potentially be an off-leash dog. Noodle, come. Come. You look at him looking in the trees. Yeah, good boy. Sit. And I got a lady behind me messing around in her garbage bins, and he didn't care. He came right to me. It's great. Break. Trying to really let him get into something. Noodle, come. Noodle, no, come. Good. So he, good boy. So he hesitated on that one. So I just gave him a verbal and no. Sit, sit, bud. There you go. Good job. So this is just a little bonus. This is Chris patterning noodle off muzzle for the first time. And then we were also working with another dog, Cash, just on helping him control his impulses. And noodle as well, you know, to be able to pattern right next to a dog and not bother the dog and be able to just hang out. So um, if you guys have any questions, you can check out my Facebook at Rough beginnings rehab we do a QA and a uh, video where uh, we answer people's questions you can go always always go on there and contact me through there and uh, check out our website if you're local to the Los Angeles area roughbeginningsrehab.com but as I said before this was specifically for uh, noodles owners so it's kind of oriented towards them 
uh, as well as, uh, you know, some generalizations. So hope it helps.